Hello and welcome to another episode of Monster Shorts on Nugget's Dungeon Terrain. First of the three monsters today is the Armor Eating Ooze. Imagine a black, mindless creature crawling around in the dungeon, attacking anyone that it comes across, not to eat their flesh, but to dissolve away their armor. It is a formidable creature, normal weapons find it hard to damage the ooze, and it's also covered in armor. Most difficult of all is that if it ensnares you, you will remain there as it dissolves the armor from around your body and you slowly die of hunger. The green material that you can see here is about 20 or 30 cents of polymer clay. It's forming the base of the ooze. Once it's been baked, I'm going to add different types of armor to it. Here's the bits that are going to be attached. Some really obvious examples would be shields, but I made sure to cut off some other body parts as well. Once the super glue has dried, I'm using a thick artist gel to apply texture around all of the edges that were just glued on and to cover all of the green stuff. A base coat of black, but to be honest most of it will end up black anyway. Then I've coated a reconstituted jar of tin bits over the whole model. It's hard to see it when it's being applied on camera, but it leaves lots of nice little rusty chunks over the whole model. I then painted anything that could be considered armour with a metallic silver. I then applied two different patina paints to all of these metal areas. The first is fittingly called rust. I painted rust on areas that I thought would normally tend to rust, but I also painted the rust close to the oozer's body because that's how it eats the metals. The second patina paint is called cinnamon.
Next up is an experiment and a really quick take on a classic D&D monster, the Gelatinous Cube. To me, this is one of the most terrifying creatures that you could find in a dungeon. Totally mindless. Anything that it comes across, it'll absorb and dissolve. I didn't want my gelatinous cube to be transparent and I didn't want it to look like just a cube, I wanted it to look like it was slightly moving and leaning to one side. I also felt like its exterior didn't have to look as stiff as jelly and that it could maybe be oozing a little. To make it look like the cube was moving in a certain direction, I decided not to make the top totally level. Therefore you could imagine as it's about to slide in one direction, it would look slightly off centre.
wiper glue was still warm, and trust me, this got really hot. I pressed down on some of the corners just to slightly modify its shape further. You'll notice I've put the cube back down on a plastic base. That's because I'm using my old friend the fabric glue again. I'm going to pour this over the top and it's going to ooze over some of the corners and down some of the sides and form some big lumps. Some of these will make it all the way to the bottom. This will make it look like some kind of mucus is dripping off as it's crawling along. You may have noticed I did add a couple of old bits, like a shield, in as I poured the glue. You can't really see these, they're just kind of suggestions through to the middle. But I actually kind of like the mystery of this, and I'm totally happy with the finish. And last but not least, the Venus flytrap of the D&D world. Who isn't attracted to a treasure chest? And who doesn't expect it to suddenly wake up and bite you? To be honest, I was once again prompted by having a small amount of polymer clay left over, and I decided to make this part of the chest mimic's mouth. Basically, this is just going to be a tongue and an area for the teeth to be stuck in. The teeth, of course, are the end of toothpicks. Uh, later on, I went through and made a small rectangular box that I could insert this into out of XPS foam. And then you'll notice that on another batch, I made a lid.
the piece went into the oven of course with the toothpicks included on a temperature that cooks polymer clay especially you can't ignite the toothpicks it's something that you can use and it's totally fine The piece came out fairly cartoony and silly, but I think that absolutely captures the spirit of a chess mimic anyway. So, thank you for watching all the way to the end. I hope to catch you soon with the next lot of creatures.